Hey, wonderful person, is this a Death Star? No, that's just Mimus, a satellite or a moon of Saturn. But in today's video, we're actually going to talk why building a Death Star like we see in Star Wars movies is actually once again impossible, and we're going to do science and explain why it is so. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> But to do all of this, we're actually going to be using Universe Sandbox Square because it allows us to create some really awesome, scientifically accurate simulations. Now, what exactly am I going to be basing my argument on? Well, it's actually one of these scenes from um, The Empire Strikes Back where we get to see uh, Death Star 2 orbiting around Andor. Now, I've actually talked about this previously in one of the videos I made a few months ago, and you can check it out here. But this time, we're going to use a new addition to Alpha 19 that essentially allows us to use tidal effects. So we're going to recreate Andor, first of all. So we're going to go into new simulation and create the moon of Andor. And so here we go. This is a procedurally generated Andor with a relatively similar look to it to what you get from a website like uh, Wikipedia. Uh, I changed the colors a little bit here just to make it look more realistic and it does have this green and blue hue to it that the actual Andor had and size here is about 2450 uh, or basically 2450 kilometers in radius. So this is what moon of Andor is and obviously it orbits some kind of a gas giant that we didn't really put here because we don't really need it. Now, what we know about uh, all of this is that somewhere around it, there is a Death Star 2 in orbit. Now, it seems that all of the Death Stars were constructed in orbit around various planets, but I just wanted to focus on this one specifically because, just like in a previous video, I found a scientific paper that describes how it's very likely that Ewoks are actually dead. In other words, the collision from a Death Star, a collision from any object in orbit around Andor, um, especially as massive as a Death Star, would very likely completely eliminate this planet. But we're not talking about this today. We're talking about why it's actually even impossible to build one around uh, such an orbit. And here we're going to be using what's known as the Roche limit, or specifically here it's Roche fragmentation, uh, which refers to the idea I've talked about previously. It's essentially... Um, a limit to the orbit around any massive object where objects simply fall apart. So here, let me give you an example. We're going to take a small minor object, like for example, let's just take Pallas, which is actually one of the asteroids in the asteroid belt. And if I were to place it around uh, this moon of Endor, you would see that it starts to basically fall apart because the tidal effects from this moon are causing it to basically destroy itself. It's creating what's known as the ring system. This is essentially how Saturn and all of the other gas giants got their ring system, or their rings that is, because there were uh, smaller objects, dwarf planets, or possibly just asteroids that traveled too close to those the gas giants, and eventually they created a ring system. So let's just erase pellets from here, remove all the fragments and make this clear again, and let's try this again. So, what do we know from uh, the paper that I mentioned that is also in the description below? We know that the actual size of the Death Star 2 is something like 343 uh, kilometers in diameter. Oh, the Wikipedia states this uh, number at 160, but we're going to go with the paper for now because his reasoning in the paper is very, very clear. Using the uh, picture from the actual movie and using the size for Endor that we get from Wikipedia, uh, this particular person in that paper actually very accurately shows us that the diameter is a little bit larger than that. And so what we're going to do now is place the object that will resemble Death Star 2 in an orbit very similar to how we see it in the movies. And we're actually going to take Mimus just for fun, and we're going to place it uh, at a distance of about 460 kilometers from the surface of Endor. So it will be right around here somewhere. So its radius is 171 kilometers, and its uh, semi-major axis is uh, 2,910 kilometers. So this is as realistic as it is. This is essentially the picture we see in the movies. Now, uh, we also need to change the materials. We know that Death Star is essentially all metal, so it's basically all iron. But because there are, um, you know, empty spaces on the inside, there's things like hangars, there's things like uh, prison cells and uh, cells for all the personnel, there should be a bit of an empty space in there, so maybe about 20% of it is going to be empty space. In other words, the density, the total density of this object is going to be approximately 
5 grams per centimeter cube, which is a little bit lower than the density of the actual iron. And so this is what it looks like right above Endor. This is essentially the Death Star being constructed in the orbit around Endor. So, take a guess, what do you think will happen if I let it go? If I let it slide, if I release the timer, will it survive or will it also become the ring system? And this is where science comes into play. This is Endor, as realistic as it can be, with materials very similar to our own Earth. And this is a Death Star, as realistic as it can be. And let's see what happens. I'm going to let go of the timer and we're going to find out if it survives the orbit or if it starts falling apart. And there we go. There's your answer. Even with a high density of metal, of essentially iron, this becomes a ring system. So it would be very, very, very impossible for anyone in the Star Wars universe to create a Death Star in that particular orbit. Unless there was some kind of a technology used that we don't know anything about. Now, this was um, using the size of 171 uh, kilometers in radius, in other words, 343 kilometers in, uh, in diameter. But let's just change it to what we have on Wikipedia, which is 160 uh, kilometers in, di in diameter. So we're going to change this again to about 80 kilometers. Because that is what Wikipedia tells us the size of Death Star 2 is. And let's see if this slightly smaller Death Star will survive. And the thing is, size does matter when it comes to the Roche um, limit, because the calculations are based on density and size. And in this case, it seems like the Death Star 2 is not being destroyed, but for some reason our Endor is smoking. Now it's possible that it's because we've already released all the materials. So let's try this again. We're going to recreate this one more time using the size of 80 kilometers in radius. And so here's our attempt number two. This is a smaller Death Star with a radius of 80 kilometers or diameter of 160 kilometers as it's specified on Wikipedia. So let's see if it actually falls apart or not. And looks like maybe just maybe it survives. So here's, I guess, the question. Is the Wikipedia correct? Or is what we see in the movies a picture that is just really, really wrong? In other words, the Death Star in the movies is twice as big as it should be, unless Endor is actually twice smaller in reality. So there's something going on in there. There's definitely a mistake somewhere, but the only Death Star that would survive in orbit is a Death Star that's really, really small. For that larger Death Star to survive in this orbit, it would have to contain even more metal. It would have to be more dense or the moon of Andor would have to be a lot less dense and a lot smaller. But with this moon of this size, if you were to look at that picture from the movies again, this Death Star would actually look twice as small. So it's not actually representative of what we see in the movies. And, you know, having played around with various values for both the density and the size of the Death Star in this particular orbit around Endor, I realized that it's uh, really the size that matters the most here. The density itself doesn't change that much, but here, this value known as the tidal stress magnitude, as soon as it becomes one, that's when things start falling apart. So, once again, if I were to start increasing the size here to, let's just say, about a uh, hundred kilometers or maybe a little bit more than that uh we would reach a limit of what's known as the roche lobes and these roche lobes is uh, it's basically it's a concept that i've already talked about previously so once uh the mass of this object goes outside of these roche lobes uh these particles these fragments start flying away flying out of this object and basically try to uh, create an asteroid ring or even join the other object so in this particular simulation, at this particular orbit uh, around Endor, the size is about 150 kilometers in radius. So an object larger than that would basically create an asteroid ring, but an object smaller than this might actually survive and become a Death Star. So what have we learned from all of this? Well, we've learned that uh, there's a mistake in the movies. We've also learned that uh, constructing a Death Star around a, a planet or a moon is not a very good idea because it may actually fall apart due to tidal stress. And the larger the Death Star, the more likely it's going to create an asteroid belt or a ring around the planet or a moon rather than creating um, an object of total destruction. So hopefully you now know a little bit more about uh, what uh, Roche limit and Roche lobes are. You kind of understand the science behind this and you got to enjoy watching me create these beautiful Death Stars around Endor. Now before we finish, let's actually deorbit this uh, Death Star as it did in the movies and collided with Endor. And let's see what kind of destruction it causes to the moon. 
And so after the destruction of Death Star 2, it's going to approach Endor and very likely create a bit of a havoc on the surface. And so here we go in 3, 2, 1, it's going to possibly scratch the surface of the moon and very likely collide with it. It's entering the atmosphere now, it's entering the surface and boom. So a lot of Ewoks probably died, but I'm guessing some of them did survive. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to talk about the Roche limits, the Roche lobes, and give you an idea of what must have happened to the Death Star if it was actually constructed around Endor. If it was too big, it would create the metal um, ring around the, the moon. And if it was too small, well, then the movie is wrong. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Come back tomorrow to learn something new using video games. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys Star Wars. And maybe check out some of the other Star Wars videos I made in the last few months. Here is the playlist for all of them. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.